Singapore's next leader will be the underdog when debating against the opposition leader. Yes, when Lawrence Wong and Pritam Singh speak, it will be Pritam Singh's game to lose. I want to be very clear. This video is not about who has the better policy. Rather, this video is about how policies are presented and how questions are asked and answered. It's about a topic that everyone needs to improve on, especially me, public speaking. The People's Action Party, or PAP, has governed Singapore since 1959. The Workers' Party, or WP, has been Singapore's biggest opposition party for around two decades. First, let's see how the PAP can keep the WP on their toes. We'll start with tactic one, ask fundamental questions. In 2014, the Workers' Party presented a slate of alternative policies, and its then leader, Lao Tia Kiang, criticised the government for having double standards. I say again, I don't think we have big plot. I have explained in this house of some misunderstanding of the speeches they had made. Uh, and in any case, I also noted that when the PAP have to uh, make a policy U-turn, they call it policy shift. I don't know whether that is a shift or is a people. Let's see how Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong responded. Madam Speaker, I think the record will speak for itself. When we make a shift, we acknowledge a shift. When the Workers' Party changes position, they pretend they haven't. That is a difference. Now, as for delegating responsibility for different parts of the budget speech to different MPs, that's entirely within Mr. Lotia Kyang's prerogative. It's not for me to suggest how he should conduct his affairs in the Workers' Party. But as a leader, you do have a responsibility to state where does the party stand on the big issue? Is the government doing right? Is it doing wrong? Do you agree with the government? Do you have a better view? Or do you abstain? Or do you abstain from abstaining? Lee's questions make me wonder if the Workers' Party has clear views. He raised an issue much more fundamental than Lowe's. They forced the Workers' Party to defend itself. By asking these questions, Lee is setting the agenda of the debate. More importantly, notice what Lee didn't do. He didn't show that the Workers' Party flip-flopped. He didn't focus on small details. Instead, he focused on a bigger issue. And Lowe responds by answering the questions. I'll say, well, he has solved some of the problems, is what the Prime Minister has mentioned. And uh, the Workers' Party MP also acknowledged this in their speech, but also pointed out there are things that is still work in progress and, and the, the government will have to focus on and to make it better and to improve. This answer allowed Lee to take the offensive again. Shortly after, Lee used simple repetition to hammer home his point. That means you have no stand. Wherever the PAP is standing, ask them to do better. That's easy. I can do that too. But where do you stand? Where are we totally wrong? Where do you think this is a completely different way to do things better? Where do you think, in principle, we do not want Singapore to be like this? By repeating his questions, Lee drives his point deep into my head. Does the Workers' Party have any fundamental disagreements with the government? If not, the government is doing a good job. In 2018, Pritam Singh became the leader of the Workers' Party. He called on the government to spend more to help Singaporeans. He said Singapore could accumulate reserves at a slower rate. When we talk about the reserves, we're not talking about raiding them. It's about slowing the growth slope of the reserves. And when we look at alternatives, what are we looking at? Healthcare, ageing, the same Singaporeans who worked hard, who toiled hard, who now are in their retiring years, retirement years. Let's hear Prime Minister Lee's response. On reserves, I'm not arguing on the technicalities of 
percentages, drawdowns, NIRC, and so on. I'm going on a basic principle that our mindset should be what is a rainy day fund, what is my daily expenses, and I meet my needs. We do draw from the rainy day fund a certain stream of income to spend. We thought this over carefully, we debated this in the House, we agreed upon a rule which we felt was a fair distribution between the present and the future generations, which is that of the expected earnings, half will be taken to be spent, half will go back and be reinvested and will be for the future. Lee spends most of his time explaining his policy. He gets his point across to Singh and Singaporeans. It's similar to Barack Obama's playbook. Take whatever question they give you, give them a line to make it seem like you answered it, and then talk about what you want to talk about. The point is to get your message across. What are your values? What are your priorities? That's what people care about. And watch Lee do it again. Mr. Singh says we have, we're not talking about bringing the reserves down. But as you know, in financial investments, there's no certainty about reserves going up. And I suggest that our fundamental mindset should be we pay our way forward. And we do not depend on another little bit from the reserves, another little bit from the reserves, another little bit from the reserves. Each time, I'm not really compromising a principle, I'm just getting a little bit more pregnant. I suggest that is not the way we should think. As a generation, we should be thinking for the future, for the next generation, and I'm their founders. I want to help to provide for them. And I think that is the mindset which has brought us here, and that's the mindset which will serve our children and grandchildren well. Lee's message is extremely simple and high level, so it's easy for me to understand his message. Lee also said that he's on the side of Singapore's children and grandchildren. This takes off some of the barbs from Singh's claim that he's concerned for ageing Singaporeans. Now let's look at a similar debate. Given the accumulated surpluses in hand, do we have some understanding of what new projects or even endowments will be created by the government for the years to come? Same questioner, same question. Why not spend more? Let's see how Singapore's next Prime Minister answers the question. We have just enough resources to cover government needs for this term of government. But beyond this term of government, we know that expenditures will continue to rise. There is no doubt that healthcare spending will rise. NIRC as a percentage of GDP will continue to provide us a steady stream of revenues for the future. But we do not expect that to increase as a percentage of GDP. Our fiscal position is in fact not that strong and we need to take steps to further strengthen it. Is this a good argument? Possibly but there are big differences between Wong's answer and Lee's answer. Lee's answer has a few good factors. Lee talks about a rainy day fund. It makes me think that Singapore not only has enough for her expected needs, she also has enough to get over a crisis. In contrast, Wong emphasizes Singapore's limited resources, so it doesn't give me the same feeling. Wong's answer is also more technical, so it's harder to understand. He went into NIRC, a topic that Lee deliberately avoided. Most importantly, Wong's answer is reactive, while Lee's answer is proactive. Wong says that he's reacting to demographic changes, while Lee speaks as if he's in charge. He's steering Singapore, and Wong's answer is also reactive as he purely focuses on answering Singh's question, instead of promoting his agenda. And when you play defense, it's difficult to win. Indeed, Wong's answers tend to focus more on criticizing the Workers' Party than on promoting his own agenda. There's no shame in acknowledging that we got that, you got that wrong. I'm very disappointed that the Workers' Party has chosen to take a different path. They feel that this approach is the best way to advance their political agenda, as they have been over the years, to paint 
the PAP government as uncaring and out of touch. We reject all forms of populism. We make sure and we uphold honesty and integrity in policy making. If the government were ever to fall short of these standards, we expect the opposition to call us out and say so. Please do. You have to do it. We expect you to do it. Conversely, if the opposition were to propose ideas and policies that we feel are populist, we likewise will highlight them and highlight our concerns. The criticisms also tend to be less fundamental. And the last criticism was only about a hypothetical situation. So the Workers' Party had no problem agreeing with it. I don't think there's any difficulty for me or my colleagues to agree to that. So Singh is largely defining the terms of the debate. He has an extreme version of letting your opponents define the debate. George Yeo was the first PAP minister to be voted out of office in post-independent Singapore. Two days before he was voted out, a big chunk of his election speech focused on the Workers' Party. The Workers' Party is merely being used as a loudspeaker for many Singaporeans who feel pain, who think that the government is high-handed and arrogant, and they want to speak up. This doesn't give me any reason to vote for him. Worse, it may alienate voters. If I think that I have a legitimate grievance with the government, it would make me think that the government is dismissive of my concerns. Could Lawrence Wong gain control of the debate? Yes, and I hope that all political parties not just answer each other's questions, but promote their agendas as well as they can, so that voters can make informed decisions. I just want the best team for Singapore. We must protect the past reserves. It's our precious resource, our strategic advantage. It's a great source of comfort and reassurance that if we run into a jam or find ourselves in a tight spot, which is bound to happen every so many years and not so many years, we will have one extra card to play. But until Wong changes his strategy, the debate will be Pritam Singh's to lose. Singh speaks simply about his agenda. The next thing we need to change in Singapore is how we manage and accommodate foreigners in our economy. Uh, we've asked for numbers precisely because we're looking for alternatives to better consider the welfare of Singaporeans. Our medium-term objective is to ensure that one-third of the seats in this house are not in the PAP's hands. And why is it important? The Constitution, the highest law of our land, which all other laws must take reference from, can only be changed if two-thirds of the MPs in this House agree. We are not playing masa masa when we make changes to the Constitution. There are serious matters, and these are serious matters that involve the lives of Singaporeans to a very acute degree. Crucially, he says that he's on the side of Singaporeans, which has a feel-good factor. And winning support is about moving emotions not facts. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, check out my other videos on Singapore and public speaking.